In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an amazing slideshow presentation on your iPhone. You can use slideshows to impress your family and friends, demonstrate your folio of work to clients, and even save them down as video clips, which you can share on social media. And you can even integrate the slideshow with other video editing apps such as iMovie to spice up your videos. You can do this by saving down the slideshow as a video file, then importing it directly into iMovie. And I'll show you exactly how to do that at the end of this tutorial. To start with, we'll create the slideshow itself using the Keynote app. This is Apple's presentation software that is similar to Microsoft PowerPoint. It's available for both iOS and macOS. And if you don't already have it installed, go to the App Store and download it. It's absolutely free. We're going to take a look at the iOS version today. But if you're working on a desktop or MacBook Pro, for example, the principles apply and you can also get it for free on the computer as well. So assuming you've already downloaded Keynote, let's get started and have a look at how to create our first slideshow. When you first open Keynote, you'll see a plus icon on the top right hand corner of the screen. Next to that is the iPhone connection icon. And this is useful when you're using Keynote as a presentation tool. So it allows you to use your iPhone as an equivalent to a laser pointer, if you like, where you can advance and rewind the progress of the slideshow. But for this demonstration, we are not gonna be utilizing those features. I'm gonna show you how to build the presentation and export it out as a movie file. Keep in mind that Keynote is a very comprehensive app that is designed for much more than just creating a slideshow, but that's what we're gonna focus on today. So to get started, I'm going to create a new project by tapping on the plus button in the right hand corner. When you do that, you'll be taken to the choose a theme page, which allows you to select from a number of pre-configured themes. Each have their own font styles and colors and particular layouts already applied. So have a look at the existing themes and find one that you feel is most appropriate to the aesthetic that you're looking for in your presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and select the color gradient theme which has a black background and a colorful gradient on the typography. So tap on the presentation template that you wanna use. And as soon as you do that, you'll be taken into the main interface of the Keynote application with one slide, which is shown on the left-hand panel. I'll go ahead and write over the typography and fill it in with my personalized details. In this example, I'm gonna use the title Touch Technology Review. To add a new slide to the slideshow, tap on the plus icon on the bottom left of the screen. And now you can select from a range of different template styles for your next slide. I'm gonna select the full screen photo template and replace the default photo with one of my own. To do that, tap on the plus icon on the right hand corner of that photo and navigate to your camera roll and replace it with the photo of your choice. Now I'll add a new slide to the slideshow, but this time I'll use the three photo layout, which has a large photo on the left-hand side and two smaller images on the right-hand side. Once again, I'll tap on the plus icon to the bottom right-hand corner of each of the images and replace them with the desired images in my camera roll. I'll stay with the car theme for now and I'll select some of the close up shots that I took of my Audi TT. And almost there now, I'll add one more image. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and add my third slide. And this once again is going to be a full screen image. So I'll select the full screen photo template, tap on the plus button and add my next image. And just to finish up on the car theme, I'll just add another three image layout by selecting that template and replacing the images. One more full screen. This time I'll replace it with a Melbourne landscape shot that I took with my Canon 5D Mark III and the 17 millimeter tilt shift lens. This is one of my favorite shots. I'll add this in. Now I'll go in and I'll break up the slideshow a little with a text screen. I'll select that template and I'll go in and change the typography. And that title is gonna be representing the next range of images in my slideshow. 
Once again, I'll tap on the plus button and I'll add a full screen image, replace the default with one of my Melbourne laneway shots. And I really do like that three layout grid. So I'm going to select that again in my next slide. And I'll go in and replace each one of those default images with my own photos from my camera roll by tapping on the plus icons on the bottom right hand corner of each image. So now that I've put together the basics of the slideshow, we need to go ahead and add some transitions and set up the animation so that it will default to automatically play each slide one after the other. By default, Keynote sets it up as a manual trigger, and that certainly is useful if you're presenting in front of a group of people using the software as a presentation tool. But as I mentioned for this particular example, we want to create an automated slideshow. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and first of all, create some transitions in between each slide and we'll set them to trigger automatically. So let's add our first transition by tapping and holding the first slide and then a submenu item appears, select the transition option and then go in and choose your favorite transition. There are many creative transition styles to choose from and you can see why I'm showing you how to do this in Keynote as opposed to iMovie because there's so many more cool effects here than the default ones that you get in iMovie. There's two different sections of effects, each have their own style. There's the appear and move category, which as it implies, it makes the image appear and move along. And then the flip, spin and scale are a little bit more dynamic in nature. You can go ahead and preview all of these to check out which one's your favorite. Otherwise, just hang on a moment and I'll demonstrate a few of these once I've applied a few transitions. So for the first transition, I've selected reflection and the duration of that transition is 1.5 seconds. You can change it to a longer transition if you like, but I'm gonna stay with the default for now. And the most important thing here is we need to change it from on tap to automatic so that it will automatically move to the next slide without requiring a touch on the screen. I'll go to the next slide, tap and hold, and then tap on transition, apply my next transition, this time I'm gonna choose my favorite, which is called grid. I'll leave the duration to one second, but again, I'll have to go in and change it from on tap to automatically, which means that it's going to apply the transition automatically. I'll go through and apply it on slide three. Same procedure, there's reflection, confetti, but actually no, this time I'll choose a cube effect. Now, before I complete the rest, I'm just gonna quickly jump ahead and show you what the slideshow looks like. To do that, I'm going to tap on the first slide on the left-hand side, and then go to the top section of the screen and tap on the play button and preview those animations. Now, before I go ahead and apply the in-between transitions to the rest of the slides, I wanted to point out that when you have a slide template that contains more than one element, such as this example that has three photographic images, we can actually apply a transition build in to each one of those images on the page for an even more dynamic effect. So in order to do that, tap on one of the photos, tap animate in the sub menu option that appears, and then tap on the add build in option on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Now we can go ahead and add our action and you can choose from a number of different categories, very similar to what we saw in the page transitions, there's basic emphasis and flip and scale effects. So scroll through and experiment with them. For the first example, I'm going to select flip. Then I'll go and tap my next photo, apply new build in for that one. And for this example, I'll try the blinds build in effect. And then on the final photo on the bottom right hand corner, I'll add the cube build in effect. Now we're not quite done yet because once again, we have to go in and make sure that these effects are triggered automatically as soon as we arrive on that page. Because remember, Keynote is designed by default to be used as presentation software and quite often the presenter would like to trigger these effects manually as they're speaking. But for this example, I wanna make sure it's all automated. So once again, let's tap on each photo and change it from on tap to automatic. So for the first image with the TFSI Quattro badge, 
we want to make sure that happens automatically after the transition that came from the previous slide. So I'll tap on that image and I'll change the submenu option from on tap to after transition. Now I'll tap on the second image, which is the petrol cap of the car. And I'll change that from on tap to after build one. And then I'll tap on the third image, which is one of the rear lights on the car. And I'll change that from on tap to after build two. So essentially we're going in order of sequence so that each one of these build effects is going to occur after the previous step. So for the first image on the page, that's gonna kick in automatically after that slide transition. The second image is gonna kick in after the build of the first image completes. And the third image will kick in after the build of the second image is completed. If you prefer, rather than selecting the after build option, you can select with build or with transition so that they all happen simultaneously. So let's go ahead and preview our slideshow now. Again, I'll go to the first slide, tap on the play button on the right hand corner. And there are all of the effects that I've applied so far on my slideshow. As you can see, a very dynamic and impressive looking slideshow. Now, before we finish up and export it out, as a movie file, I just wanted to mention that there are a number of different layout templates that you can choose to add even more depth to your slideshow. I really just demonstrated a couple in this example, but in order to do so, just tap on that plus button on the bottom left hand corner and browse through those layouts and add them as required. You can also add a blank page by selecting the blank page template and then tapping on the plus button icon on the top right hand corner to add your elements manually. You can select from photos or videos, images from your camera roll, you can even record audio, add an image gallery, insert from a folder, and even add drawings and equations. For example, I'm gonna tap on the drawing option, and now I get some tools that will enable me to create a freehand drawing. I'm not gonna be using that for this presentation. I just wanted to point out that there are other ways of adding media to your slideshows if that's what you're looking to do. Now, I'm not gonna use any of those last examples that I just demonstrated in my final presentation. So if you wanna delete any of the slides that appear in your presentation, tap and hold on the thumbnail icon of that slide in the left-hand column, and then slide over to the delete option to delete that slide. You can also arrange the position of those slides in the presentation by tapping on the slide thumbnail on the left-hand side, holding and dragging it upwards or downwards into the appropriate position in your presentation. Now that I've demonstrated all that, I'll just go ahead and delete those unnecessary slides in the presentation. And now that I have my final arrangement ready to export, I'm going to tap on the three dotted icon on the right hand side of the screen and we're going to export the project out. When you do that, you'll see there's a number of options, including the ability to share directly, export, print, or use Keynote Live. If you scroll down, there are some more options, but we're gonna tap the export option. You now have a number of choices here. You can export the slideshow out as a PDF, a PowerPoint presentation, which means it will be compatible with Microsoft PowerPoint, a movie file, an animated GIF, separate images, or as a keynote theme. We're going to select the movie option, so we'll get a self-contained movie, which is the most versatile format, and it will allow us to use the movie inside iMovie to be part of a more complex edit or project, such as a YouTube video, for example, or any other social media video post or whatever you happen to be editing in your iMovie app. When you tap on movie, you get the option to export it at the original size that you're working in. You can change it to 720p, 1080p, which is full HD, or even to 160p, which is a 4K movie clip. So select the resolution accordingly. And just before we finalize, there are a few more options. You can change that resolution if you change your mind in the top section. You can specify the slide range. In this case, I do want to export the entire presentation, so I'll leave it at all. But if you have a really large presentation and you decide you only want pages one to five, for example, you can select that option to export a reduced range in your presentation. 
And if you remember earlier, we had the option inside the build of our presentation to change the amount of time that would transpire between each slide effect and each build within the slide. So if you wanna override the defaults or those settings that you've applied, you can go ahead and change the duration of each in this section. Tap on export, the presentation will render out. We can use the top row of icons to instantly share it via AirDrop, messages, email, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, or whatever you might have available on your screen. But for this particular example, I wanna save it into my camera roll. So I'm going to select save video and it will place itself into the camera roll. Now we're gonna go ahead and integrate that slideshow movie within our iMovie video project. So to do that, I'm going to quickly create a new movie in iMovie. To do that, I'll tap on the plus button in the project screen, tap on movie, and I'll just quickly add a few photos. So we've got a sample movie to work with. I'll add a few images there. Here we go. Now, if I was just using iMovie for a slideshow, I would be able to apply transitions in between each one of these images that appears on the timeline by tapping on the transition icon in between. However, you only get a very limited range of transition effects, including the theme transition, dissolve, slide, wipe, and fade. So all that effort that we put into creating our slideshow in Keynote is really gonna pay off because we get access to so much more variety when it comes to selecting our transition and build effects. So to add that slideshow that we just created in Keynote, tap on the plus icon on the left-hand side, navigate to that slideshow in our camera roll, and it will now be placed on the timeline. If we preview it, you can see that slideshow is now playing within iMovie. Of course, I can go ahead and remove those images that I was demonstrating before in iMovie because the slideshow that I've just imported from Keynote is so much more impressive. I can add other media elements to my iMovie project and export it out as a final movie. For example, you could add the slideshow movie presentation that we just created in Keynote at the beginning of your project and then follow it up with some face to camera video or any other type of footage that you would like to add to your YouTube video. So once you're happy with your final project in iMovie, tap on the done icon on the top left-hand side. That'll take you back to the projects page. Tap on the export icon, which is depicted by a square box with an arrow in the bottom sub menu of icons and go ahead and share your project either directly to social media using the top icons or by exporting the project or selecting save video to save it down to your camera roll. I'm going to use the export project option and by doing that, I can choose the resolution of my movie from 360p to 540, 720, 1080 or even 4K. Tap on the desired resolution and your project will now be exported and saved into your camera roll as a movie file. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this demonstration today. If you did, you might want to check out my related videos on iMovie, which I'll leave a link to in the comments box below. And if you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified of up and coming video releases.